first wave free agency is in the books. Now we hit the second wave and see what values to be found, but we're gonna do a mock draft that deals with the NFL world post free agency. First wave that is. What's up, it's your boy Centron coming back with another news slash analysis last reaction video, and I kid you not, that's my real name. And uh, this is gonna go four rounds, but I'm not gonna go that far. First round, and we might go second, depending on how things go, because we got some important Eagles news to get to. Anyways, let's scroll down and see what Chad Ruder has to say. He actually has some solid picks, man. So the first overall pick by the Carolina Panthers, CJ Stroud, sophomore coming out. Um, they assess him as the best bet to go with, and um, you know it really gives them you know a quarterback who has some you know size, he's six foot three. Um, yeah, he, he's he's strong in the pocket, and uh, he's good at talking the intermediary, and might just be the shot in the arm that the Carolina Panthers need um, to lead this franchise. Frank Wright coming over from Indianapolis by way of Philadelphia was our O coordinator when he won the Super Bowl, and uh, man, it just uh, I think it leaves him in good hands, and he's he's a so he'll be able to uh, get this guy in shape. Houston Texans, Bryce Young. So they follow up. Um, Domingo Ryan's head coach there makes his first pick. And um, happens to be a young quarterback, man. Comes in. He's 5'10", shorter guy. But, um, you know, his pro day went pretty well. And uh, he got rave reviews. And yeah, he's, he's going to, you know, be a uh, you know, risk with his size. And he's like 204, under 207. But... That being said, he has the requisite talent, and uh, we'll just have to see how they are able to protect him. They just signed uh, Laramie Tunsil, left tackle, to a seven, a twenty-five million dollar uh, average year, three-year extension, making him the highest-paid left tackle. So, a lot of pressure. But um, if they protect him, give him time to uh, to develop and grow, we'll see what happens. Third quarterback in a row here with Indianapolis making the trade with the Arizona Cardinals and uh, then bringing in another sophomore, Anthony Richardson out of Florida. He has a boatload of talent, man. 6'4", 240, ran a 4'4", 3. The fours are just matching. And um, if he can uh, take to the tutelage of um, one Shane Steichen, who is now the head coach there coming over from, again, by way of Philly, um... Again, to the Indianapolis Colts, it's just weird. Just keep picking off our coaches one by one. But um, he, if he can, he can uh, show his potential. I mean, this year, I don't know if he, they start him out right out the gate. We'll be sh smart to redshirt him, but you know how the NFL is these days. They don't have patience to sit a uh, quarterback, you know, for two, three years, at least three, like Aaron Rodgers did. And then um, time for even head coaches or even GMs to uh, give them that much of a leash. It's like three years, and then you're out. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, gives the Cardinals some, some extra picks, third, extra third and then fourth. But, yeah, they just want to, you know, want to take a chance on uh, losing him to the Cardinals. I mean, well, I mean, not the Cardinals, another team leapfrogging them. Sorry, the Cardinals have, you know, expensive as almost quarter million, I mean, quarter of a billion dollars invested in another short diminutive, diminutive uh, quarterback, one Kyle Murray. But um, this could set them up. Or set them back. Which is it with Richards? We don't know. He's not yet a fully finished product. All right, next, the Arizona Cardinals. Will Anderson this is a slam dunk pick for them. He regressed with 10 sacks last year, but, you know, 17 and a half the previous year. And uh, runs a 4-6. Uh, this size is 250, 6-3. The guy has talent and uh, provides something they need at, you know, at edge. And, um... <clears throat> Allows them to have a solid building block with uh, Jonathan Gannon starting his his reign as head coach there in the desert. And uh, maybe he fares better than he did in Philadelphia, but I don't think so. Anyways, Christian Gonzalez here, man. Um, he's shot up the boards. And uh, being talented, talented as he is, it makes sense. And, um, you know, Pete Carroll loves those long, tall, fast corners and it just gives him a, a guy to, uh, to uh, pair with last year's fifth round pick uh, Tariq Woolen out of um, 
USTA. I don't even know where that is. I mean, I know where it is, but I don't know where what university that is. But the guy ran a four three at two fifteen, uh, six foot four. I mean, the guy could jump out the gym. So I mean, gives them a, a nice pair of corners there, in uh, in uh, Washington, and um, yeah, I mean he's a talented guy. I think having him be the number two would would, would do well wonder, wonders for him. And uh, he, he's smooth athlete, might put him in a position to be this year's Tariq Woolen for them. All right, Detroit J- Jalen Carter he slid down the uh, the boards, but you know they take a risk here with you know with the uh, legal issues and, you know, the mental issues that he has after being involved in a deadly car accident, um, contributing it to it in some way, shape, or fashion, and then dealing with the, you know, the, um, the consequences, losing somebody close to him or losing a couple people close to him and, um, yeah, potentially being racked with guilt and, yeah, that affecting his motivation when he starts to focus on his football career. But, um, yeah. Okay, they, they drafted a, a second round pick in uh, 2021. Um, so, yeah, yeah uh, the Lions are trying to build that line, man. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson already there. Nice pick for them to try to create a monster, monstrous defensive line. Tyree Wilson, he had surgery. So, um, you know, I, I, apparently that doesn't knock him down the board, boards. He had a foot procedure that, you know, had worked on. But um, he was labeled a freak athlete. And, you know, the Las Vegas Raiders, they, the Raiders have always loved those athletes, you know, size, weight, uh, speed ratio guys. Yeah, they, they've been doing that since uh, back in the day with Al Davis. He started it, actually. But um, gives them a nice guy to pair with Max Crosby, and they get after it here. Atlanta Falcons at number eight. Lucas Van Ness, he's shooting on the boards as well. Um, 270 guy, like six foot five, maybe six foot six, ran out uh, for a four seven or so, or maybe, no, I think maybe four six or maybe four five. I mean, he's a, he's an athlete out there. Um, the question is, you know, where do they stick him at tackle or at, at end? Most likely at end, and you know, he's a tweener, so they you know like to get the most out of his athleticism, athleticism, put him like a NASCAR package on the third down, let him slide over to D tackle and, and just beat beat those um, guards with his and centers with his his speed and quickness. So, um, they're also building a line. They have, still have uh, Grady Jarrett there and it uh, just makes their line even nastier. B. John Robinson, a surprise here coming at number nine. They just, yeah, signed Deont- uh, Deontay Foreman. But, you know, like you said, you know, they're saying here, he's in the Christian uh, McCaffrey mode. Has, he, the guy has <laughs> hands like velvet, they said. You know, soft hands. He can just um, catch the ball like, like a wide receiver, very natural hands. So, um, not only is he, you know, a good shifty guy with contact balance, he can pick his spot, pick his spots, speed, size, power, uh, suddenness, explosiveness. He's got it all. So a complete back, and they just try to, you know, really um, make that backfield with him and Justin Fields a headache to deal with. All right, Will Levis, the pick, uh, the Minnesota <laughs> Vikings trade here with the Eagles. I don't like it. You know, I want to stay there or, I mean, yeah, you, I know, actually, I do like trading back because that would be with, with how I would do um, and get a third rounder here. So we get, um, I think, a pick. I don't know if we, uh, uh, 2024 first rounder. Wow. That would be big. Um, but, yeah, they get the quarterback of the future here. Will Levis will be a nice pick for them. Kurt Cousins, he's not, you know, um, an a-hole or, or uh, a me first guy. He would, you know, take the guy under his wing and um, teach him all that he can be, all that he knows. And, you know, he's a, Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback. He just hasn't come up big in uh, big moments. So, um, yeah, this would be a great investment in the future here. He's seen as, like, the most seasoned of the quarterbacks, but, you know, the one with the lower ceiling. So um, he goes last, but... I mean, I, I like him. I like the tape. You guys got Moxie. Um, really did a lot at Kentucky there. Um, a well-developed quarterback. Targets the intermediate uh, routes, middle of the field very well. So, um, reminds me of Jay Cutler. Yeah, I could see that. But as long as he, you know, uh, mitigates those risks, <laughs> that risk management out there. All right, Peter Skaronsky going here to the Titans. I mean, that's just a plug-and-play because they uh, 
let go of uh, Taylor Lewan in the off season, and uh, he you know brings it brings him here, but they're bringing him in uh, a tackle because he, he does have like you know shorter arms. He, he's six foot three, but you know the length of his arms make him can make them play him inside. So you know position flexibility there, but. Um, he only had one sack in 800 plus uh, pass pass uh, pass attempts um, or uh, plays. So um, highly dependable guy. His uh, technique is superb from what they, what they say. All right, um, J- Jordan Addison. Uh, this would be like uh, the first uh, receiver coming off the board. One thing to get uh, anybody other than a real thin guy. He's not even the equivalent of, of Brandon Cooks. He's not a you know a burner. Um, he, I mean, yeah, he's four or five speed, I think. But um, if he's silky smooth in his route running, and eh, it could be a decent pick for the Texans. But I don't see them going this receiver here. Um, I'd like to see them go uh, with another route, maybe, maybe a Quentin Johnson. But I mean, they're probably going with more refined. But I still would go with um, the receiver out of Boston College if I go the route. But maybe just the height. He's five nine. All right, the Green Bay Packers, Paris Johnson, get a, uh, a tackle. Projected cha- trade with the New York Jets. So um, they're getting the Jets' first-round pick for Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, yeah I mean, they, they uh, continue to go on that line. Yeah, Bakhtiari, yeah, there. And uh, okay, he can back it up. Or, uh, oh, yeah, he can move the other guy inside. I mean, it's a talented guy, young guy. But, um... He's, he's a solid pass protector. Uh, Lynx has a good length, so uh, could be a good value pick for them. The New England Patriots here selecting Joey Porter Jr. I mean, this would be right in their wheelhouse of doing what we don't expect him to do because of the Patriots. You know, we never know what Bill Belichick has on his mind, but, man, he could definitely use the service as a cornerback as a position they need help at. They just resigned Jalen Mills to, you know, play safety, though. Um, the corner will be playing more, most likely there um, full-time, so... You know, he comes in, plug and play starter, and man, adds a lot to that Patriots room, man. Six foot two, four four six, thirty four inch arms. Yeah, he's he's got his uh, a lot of his dad, daddy's talent and his face looks just like the guy. All right, Green Bay Packers double dip here, going with Michael Mayer. I always want to say Michael Myers because he's, he's probably a nightmare out there. Notre Dame tight end um, gives Jordan Love, you know, uh, um, a guy to uh, you know be his best friend out there um has prowess as a blocker and uh yeah, he's, he's a good receiver so a good t- two-way tight end but he's the first of the tight ends to come off the board here the Washington the commanders go with Osiris Torrance man a talented guard he just brings aggressiveness um yeah I mean yeah, they could use their second round pick but um yeah I mean Eric being me he loves Lyman just like uh, his uh, mentor, Andy Reid, and um, also his, you know, disciples <laughs> and uh, people that he <coughs> taught to value the the hog mollies up front, and then bring one of those um, straight out of the '80s to the Washington Commanders, so boost that line and uh, gives them some position flexibility to move other guys to where they need to shift them. It's a little bit of a surprise. I wouldn't say surprise. He's going kind of like where his value's leading. He's been. Um, shooting up the draft boards as well. Nolan Smith coming out of Georgia, the edge rusher, six foot two, two thirty eight, running that four three nine, man. Right behind um, that four three eight that um, Michael Parsons ran, linebacker. But you know, Michael Parsons is a little bit more talented. This guy, more consistent coming out of Penn State. Um, but man, he'll get out the quarterback with him and TJ TJ Watt. That would be a nightmare to deal with. And Alex Highsmith in the middle, Whew. and he can get out the quarterback too, <laughs> even though he did it. Just because T.J. Watt was out last year, but he showed that he has more in his wheelhouse than was expected. All right, Detroit Lions go with Devin Witherspoon here, the Illinois corner. Second corner call, come off the board, and kind of a gap between... Um, wow, they double dip at corner here? I just don't see that. They probably... I mean, um, let's go back up. Who who picked at number six? Yeah. I mean, no, 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 no. Okay, no, no. It, who picked... Um, Okay, it was, it was the Seahawks. I'm looking. I'm thinking about another uh, draft, but um, no, the value would be just too great. I mean, they'd have to, you know, they'd have him and CJ and, and Jeff Okuda, 
and um, I forget the other guy that got suspended in the um, for his hit. I think in the Eagles game, um, he got thrown out the out the game. He got DQ'd, but um, yeah, it'd be a very solid secondary for them. You know, building towards the future, um, getting those guys more seasoned. He's gonna come in. Um, he's probably gonna be a plug and play starter, but still needs some seasoning. Um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers go with Broderick Jones, these talented sophomore, rich, you know, redshirt sophomore coming out of Georgia. Um, he had good measurables, man. And uh, he had good bend, good uh, mirror movement in the um, pass pro mirror drill at the combine. Yeah, pair him and uh, Tristan Wurfs. Donovan Smith, they released in the offseason. Another plug and play starter. He might take his lumps early, but, you know, young guy. And I guess you, we call it a key starter for years years to come all right trade with seahawks the buffalo bills um select one kalijah canty here so it adds to that uh what do we call it that talented line they have there and uh with devon miller coming back from the acl surgery and um ed, ed oliver eh, he's in a contract year can he really finally put it together they don't wait and see they draft his most likely replacement here and, uh, you know, they, they end up doing you know, what they're doing. They give you a chance. You don't produce. Yeah, they just bring in somebody that's coming to take your spot. All right, Los Angeles Chargers bringing Jackson Smith to Jiva. Not sure how he fits in with those rare receivers. He's kind of similar to what they have already. Keenan Allen's a beast, but maybe this is the eventual replacement for him to train them up. And uh, what well, better to learn from than the master? Pause. But, um, yeah, makes it interesting um, there in San Diego. But... A slower stable of wide receivers. And, the, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs not waiting on their heels here. Um, trade up with um, the Baltimore Ravens and acquire speed, speed, and more speed. Jalen Hyatt, the burner coming out of Tennessee, ran a 4-4-1. And, man, um, you know, just keep adding to that, you know, receiving core. They got him, Sky Moore, Kadarius Toney. Um, a tight end they have, you know, one the best of the game right now, Jason, um, Travis Kelsey. So, I mean, the rich keep getting richer. What else could you ask for? I'd love to have him, but, you know, like, I think he's going to go in the first round. So, all right, the Philadelphia Eagles finally on the clock. My boys, they pick Adetomiwa Adebaware. Man, it took me a while to be able to say that on one go. But um, the senior, D-tackle, I don't have him slotted as a D-tackle. I'd rather see him as an uh, edge or eventual replacement for Brandon uh, Graham. I think he could be a monster Runs a four four nine at DN. Oh, like, put him on the edge. Let him use that explosiveness, explosiveness, and let him loose. He's six one and a quarter, closing it on six two. But um, just let him get upfield, turn inside, teach us some pass rush moves. You know, like turn, how to turn speed to power. This guy could be a fucking monster coming off the edge. Why would you not? Why would you pigeonhole that in the middle? Have him, you know, beef up about three hundred. And, um, you know, he's slowed him down, down to, like, a 4-5, you know, range. I mean, that's not a lot of, a lot of loss of speed, but it, I just, it doesn't allow him to use his tools, I think, the best, you know, he could. Coming off the edge there, even some stand-up potential with that explosiveness um, in a hybrid front. Him and Hassan Reddick, come, he's even faster than Hassan Reddick and bringing 30, 40 more pounds. Crash it in, Boom! Can you imagine? Oh man, put him in a NASCAR package on a you know third down, bring him in in the middle, let him do work against guards in the league. That's when you that's where you let him make his money, not full time but part time. Get let him, don't let don't let him get beat up in the middle. Let him loose on the edge. Let him play. I hate that assessment. So, I mean, I love it if we're putting him at edge, full time, and letting him moonlight on long downs and distances. On a late down in the long distances. All right, Deontay Banks coming here, going to do ball. Pairing with yes, with Tyson Campbell, a talented corner out of Georgia. Two long guys there on the outside, man. Gives you, uh, makes you give the AFC South wide receivers fits for years to come. All right, Trenton Simpson coming here out of Clemson, the junior linebacker going to uh, the Giants. Adding more talent to that linebacking core, I mean, they're just really trying to overturn. They've been trying to do it for years, be experimenting here and there. But man, they find probably maybe find some winners here with Bobby Okere, Okereke, Okereke, <laughs> and Trenton Simpson, the fast linebacker out of Clemson. 
Dallas Cowboys um, replaced um, Dalton Schultz with Dalton Kincaid. Wow. That's uh, interesting. Two Daltons. Daltons, one for the other. Um, he, he's the second best tight end coming in. And um, he's also a, a balanced wide receiver. Can catch, can block. More leading towards a you know, receiver coming out of Utah. <laughs> um, those pass catching guys, but he has a lot of talent. Let's see. Cody Mock here, the toothless front tooth wonder. Uh, coming out of North Dakota State. That's where Carson Wentz was. Uh, a tackle, but, you know, could be played at um, in, in the inside. Uh, doesn't have the longest length, so that's why maybe they slot him on the interior. But he's like 6'5", so uh, big guy. And um, gives them some talent. They're, like, they're trying to overhaul that line and, and really protect whoever's going to be a quarterback there. So they don't take a quarterback in the first round. In the first round. But they, um, they you know, try to protect the guy they have right now, Geno Smith. All right, Dan Darnell Wright coming out of Tennessee here. The talented, big, solid tackle. Um, bringing in as a tackle, <laughs> most likely right, right tackle. Well, not most likely right tackle because Orlando Brown had signed, stole away from the division. Um, AFC um, competitor, Kansas City Chiefs, and Jonah Williams, who gave up nine or ten sacks last year. Ugh. The ex for former uh, former rounder asked for uh, first rounder asked for a trade because the writing was on the wall when they brought in Orlando Brown. So this gives them a, a pair of bookends to uh, start, and that are not disgruntled. Miles Murphy coming in late here in the first round. Um, New Orleans Saints. Um, yeah, I mean like they, they uh, need a ritual replacement for Cameron Jordan, and then you know. Marcus Davenport left to go to the Vikings as well. One year, $13 million deal. So you get some uh, solid value here. The Eagles at 30, picking again uh, to replace Cedric Garner Johnson, bring in Brian Branch. He's on the lighter side. I mean, he's a solid tackler. But, I mean, maybe it's good value here. But I prefer to go a, a little bit of a different route. Um, maybe we tackle... Um, Maybe we go O line. Um, try to bring in a guard, starting a uh, starting level, uh, caliber guard for next year to replace uh, Cam Jurgens, who's gonna most likely slide in to center when um, Jason Kelsey tells us that he's out. Um, but we'll, we'll see. You know, it, it, a, cor a corner would be nice, but I mean, I think this is good value though. It'll be good value, um, young guy. And we probably will slot him in as an immediate starter. Um, if not, you could... I mean, like, if we don't let him and Reed uh, Blankenship complete for, compete for the job. So, a eh, solid pick in retrospect, but uh, I'd still like to go elsewhere. Um, no, eh, but I, I really won't be John Robinson, to be honest. All right, the Kansas City... I mean, the Kansas City, the Kansas City Chiefs replacement, Baltimore Ravens, select Cam Smith here, and allows them to uh, pair him with... Um, I forget their guy... Um, they gave a contract to Marlon, 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 um, Humphreys, I want to say, um, yeah, Marcus Peters, he's, a, he's, a, you know, long in the tooth veteran, thank you for your service, but, you know, we don't need you anymore, so we're gonna let you slide out, all right, and that's the end of the first round, I think we'll do the second round maybe another day, because this video is already long, let's get to some news around the league, all right, Nelson Aguilar signed a one-year, uh, $3.25 million deals, deal with the Baltimore Ravens, but as we see, that doesn't affect the draft. He's there for depth, you know, to, or to be a third uh, a third wide receiver slot guy, which actually is a good role for him. The Carolina, Car Carolina, the Carolina Panthers select DJ Chark. Select DJ Chark, I'm on a lot of it. Um, they, they pick him up on a one-year deal. He brings a lot of value, 434 speed, six foot four guy, yeah, he, he can get after it. So um, he's basically the DJ Moore replacement for this year and see what he can do. And uh, they trade for a kicker, Zane Gonzalez, from the 49ers. So interesting. Uh, not too many special teams guys at the kicker or punter positions get traded for him, you know, which just shows that they wanted him badly. Mark Reyes Callaway, a decent depth signing. Uh, I think he's a former Bear, uh, Bears or Saints um, wide receiver has some talent number three or number four Nate Sudfeld an old Eagles guy 
I uh, almost got a starting, uh, not starting job, almost got a uh, roster spot with us, but uh, he went elsewhere. Steven Sims, a decent wide receiver. I think it was third round pick for the Washington Redskins. Uh, so, I mean, it's not, they're, they're trying to, you know, just have some pieces in place for the eventual quarterback they're going to select. Let's see, anybody else here worth the note? CJ Ham, the fullback, the fullback, the, the dinosaur of the league. Um, signed a two-year contract extension with the Minnesota Vikings, so um, they wanted to keep him. All right, here's the big news for the Eagles. I'll first start with Terrell Edmonds, the safety coming from uh, Pittsburgh, five-year starter. Um, rookie contract expired. They didn't pick up his first-year option, but he um, got signed to a one-year deal worth about two to three million for them. Had two two picks, three sacks, and about seventy tackles last year. He's only missed a couple game, a couple games in his career, and uh, only once the injury last year. First time ever missing a game because an injury, you know, solid safety, still a young guy, twenty six years old, and um, got some decent speed, four four seven, coming out of Virginia Tech. Uh, him and his brother, you know, some, you know, uh, handsome, young faced guys with long hair, um, you know, good looking guys, good good lineage, but um, you know, he has, he has some talent. I still don't know if this is a depth signing or but but t- i would say it's a fringe starter but you know depending on what we do and uh i think we're slotting him in probably at one slot uh, one slot to start because we i looked over him i totally forgot he was on the market he's a good guy but to be honest you know um i would prefer taylor rap i think he's more of a playmaker um over terrell emmons but i'm not mad at this signing i think it's, it's definitely a solid signing and um, at the very least, he could be, he's going to be competing for a starting job for us. So in, a, in, event, in the event he doesn't start, he gives us quality depth and probably you know, a low, uh, lower tier um, cost savings signing. But the real big news here, Lane Johnson, the right tackle, um, the star of the offensive uh, line for the Eagles, one of them, a future Hall of Famer, was given a one-year 33.4 uh, $33 million, uh, $445,000 extension through 2026 with $30 million guaranteed, man, which is, you know, um, cuts his cap number from $23 million or so to about $14 million, about $9, nine million or, so, or so in cap savings and allows us some more flexibility. So this just shows us that Howie ain't done this year. Howie still said, let me cook. Let me bring in the groceries that I want. Let me go shopping, baby. So we'll see what he does with his money. Um, I don't know. I really don't. I really have no idea what he's going to do. But I do know I like the direction that he's going. Um, Lane Johnson just gives us more cap relief, and you know, um, gives him with his three years left plus this year, four years, eighty million. So right in the, in the wheelhouse of uh, the uh, of Brown, the O tackle that got signed uh, to the Chiefs squad, and he's also a right tackle. Uh, which they, I think they're going to switch him to left tackle. They give him left tackle money because Lane fucking deserves it, man. Um, played injured throughout the playoffs on a torn adductor last year. Just showed his mess, metal, his toughness, his grit. Who else would you want there on that O-line uh, protecting Jalen Hurts? So, I mean, like, um, just glad to see that. And um, it just, I just, I think it shuts down the idea that we're going to draft a lineman, uh, 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 offensive lineman in the first round. We don't have to we could it'd be a luxury to draft for next year but i really think that we're trying to get back to the super bowl this year shows by the moves that we've made to retain the people that we have and then we're going to go for impact players that's why i want b john robinson with a 10th pick or like a, tr- a small trade down uh, to get like a, you know some more mid-round picks and um from there you, you can draft tight end you can draft receiver um you can draft a safety um, you can draft a D lineman. You can draft, I mean, like an a edge rusher. So, I mean, there's so many routes we can go. I just want us to win this year. Um, but, man, really would, to make our offense a superpower, we need, I mean, we need an explosive runner. So, if we don't get um, Bijan, I'd like Zach Charbonnet, the uh, UCLA running back as a third, potentially second. I don't know. He might. He might get snapped up. But uh, he's a talented guy. So, anyways, we're going to get up out of here. Sorry, I lied. 
we have a couple more things to cover. Yeah, Will Levis had a nice pro day workout, man. Um, he had a fast-paced uh, routine going from play to play, and he slung the ball, man. One incompletion that hit the ceiling, one completion where he overthrew the guy, and one completion where it was, like, short. The guy just couldn't hold on to it. But he said, I got the, them cannons, or that cannon, and he, he showed out and showed up with that, uh, <laughs> with that, proving that. But anyways, that's it for today. I'm going to call it. But you're not even watching, though, so it's all good. But as always, it's fly, eagles fly, and let's mother fucking go. Thanks for watching. Check me out at Cintron, Cintron Anime, Cintron Life, or Cintron Laughs, or other social media.